Hi everyone. So today we're going to do a tutorial about hollowing out models for 3D prints in ZBrush. Um, as you can see here, I have a sphere, which is a Dynamesh sphere, which is one of the default projects in ZBrush. Um, and underneath the geometry tab here, um, you can see that we Dynamesh is turned on and I've set the resolution to 64, or rather that was the default that was set when um, I opened up the project, the default project. So uh, let me just fumble with the screen here. Uh, as you can see, the resolution for this is probably going to be good enough for what we're actually doing today. It's not, not huge, but it's going gonna, it's gonna to hold up for what we're looking for. So Dynamesh retopologizes your geometry um, and to, in order to use it, all you need to do is to control click on the canvas and what that will do, it will, it will regenerate your topology based on the current state. So if, for example, um, we decided to change this and I'm just going to take a, a random brush here, so the move tool and start pulling out some geometry here. I'm just going to increase the size. If we pull this out here like this, you can see that, that the topology starts stretching and it's not very nice. Um, and the polygons are just far too long. So by simply control dragging with Dynamesh turned on at a resolution of 64, you can see that the geometry now gets retopologized into a nice, clean, easy to use. And we can keep on doing this and pushing and pulling and just control dragging anytime we need to on the canvas and it will just regenerate this for us and basically allowing us to infinitely change this model without any limitations, which is pretty cool. So I've turned on Polyframe here so you can actually see what you're seeing in the viewport here. But once you get used to it, you don't actually need to do that. So you just start pushing and pulling out your model. And as it starts to fall apart, as you can see here, then you just simply control drag and it'll refix it for you. So again, just push and pull and you'll see in the viewport when you need to fix it yourself. So I'm going to use the undo uh, tool here or the undo uh, flood bar at the top here to, to go back to a basically a Dynamesh sphere with resolution of 64 and we're going to start from the beginning. So this could be any model that you have. So you can imagine if you had created your own model and you wanted to use the Dynamesh functionality, if you wanted to actually, you could just turn on Dynamesh at any given stage for an existing model and crank the resolution to a, a resolution that works for your model. Um, if you find one that doesn't, you simply undo, change the resolution up to a number that does work, control drag again to see whether that's the giving you the resolution that you need, and if it is, great, um, you now have a Dynamesh model. I'm going to set this back to 64 for the purposes of this, though, just to start again. So let's pretend that this model was actually uh, your own model, and you had it Dynamesh and you're ready to go, you're happy with it, it's, its shape and the resolution. So if you wanted to hollow this out, the way to hollow it out is to use the Create Shell button over here. Uh, what this does is it actually performs a Dynamesh operation on your model and uh, will actually give you the hollowed out result. Um, given the right circumstances. So the first thing we need to do is to choose a brush uh, to actually cut into the model. I'm going to choose a insert brush here, an insert horizontal cylinder. It could be any insert brush, but the horizontal cylinder will give you a nice round hole, which makes a lot of sense. So I'm going to go ahead with that. Um, and as you can see, if you hold down Alt and you drag anywhere on the surface of this, what it'll do is it'll immediately it'll mask the sphere and it'll create a cylinder. This cylinder, when I let go, will actually be uh, inverted, the normals of it will be inverted, as you can see. The sphere is masked, the cylinder itself is inverted, and that's just saying that it's going to perform an operation on this once I, I now remove the mask and actually control, click, drag again. So if I control, drag now on the canvas, I'm going to remove the mask. The second time I do it, I would actually be performing the Boolean operation of the cylinder on the sphere. Um, and I'll just to show you what that would look like, I've just done it there. And as you can see, the inside of the sphere has just been booleaned into. It doesn't actually create a shell. It, we've just literally cut a hole inside the sphere. This isn't exactly what we want. We are looking for a shell with a hole in it. So I'm just going to undo that particular operation. So this uh, the, the create shell button relies on the thickness value. So you can see I had it set to four. So if instead of actually control dragging on the surface, I just hit create shell, it will actually now try and create the shell using the thickness value. And you can see that it's not very, it's not usually successful. Um, there's a little bit of artifacts around. Um, it's 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 done the the operation, but it's not as nice as we would like. So as you can see, if we zoom out here, and I just try and actually show you the inside of the model here, uh, you can hold down Control, Shift, and Alt, and that will actually allow you to just drag across the screen and hide a section of a model. So as we look inside, you can see a shell has been created. The results on the inside of the shell are about as bad as the results on the outside, but there's certainly a shell there. I'll just turn on double-sided on the material here to actually show you. You can see that there's a bridge between the two, and we actually have a hollowed-out model, but 
Again, the results of the tearing of the polygons on the surface aren't great. We can try and smooth them out, but it's not really very successful and we're better off actually just fixing it and doing it right, to be brutally honest. So I'm just going to undo that operation there to, to get us back to where we started. So what you may have noticed at the start was that the actual cylinder here that, uh, that I first made wasn't actually deep enough to go into the sphere enough to actually cover the distance of the thickness of the wall. Um, and that's the problem is that we're not basically inserting the cylinder in far enough. So I'm going to undo one more step so we get back to the stage where the cylinder, where the sphere itself was actually masked. And um, that's it here. And now because that's masked, if I do a move operation on this, uh, I'm going to be moving the cylinder that we drew earlier on. And that will allow me now to, to move that in or out and to uh, rescale it, resize it. As you can see, I can just move it around the screen here and uh, change the size of it, whatever. I'm using the move tool to change it. You could use the scale tool. That's all, all fine. Um, and what we need to do is push this in far enough so that the, the length of it will actually cover the four, the level, the number four thickness that we've, re we've required. So I'm going to push this in a lot further than it was before in order to totally cut through the hole. I'm going to unmask the sphere so we can actually perform our, our create shell operation. And uh, that should, when we hit this button now, should give us a much cleaner result. So as you can see, that is a lot cleaner. Uh, again, the edges, there's no torn edges on the model anymore. The, the inserted cylinder was long enough to actually cut all the way through past the thickness of the shell. Um, I'm going to hold down Control, Alt and drag, Control, Shift, Alt and drag again to show you the inside of the model. And as you can see, the inside is, is a lot more successful as well. I'll turn on double sided so we can actually see uh, the bridge going through the model and the, the uh, inside of it and see that it is actual shell. Again, we generally would hold down shift and just smooth that out. It you know, does a nice job cleaning it up and you could do the same on the outside um, if required. So I think you'll agree that's pretty amazing um, and that you can do that in ZBrush. You've hollowed out your model and it looks great. Uh, one of the things that I did do there was that I had actually chosen to choose a value of four. If I just undo all this, we could we could just as easily have chosen a thickness, a shell thickness of, say, for example, eight, uh, which would make it a lot thicker. But the problem with changing something like that uh, you have to be aware of this, this length of the cylinder that you first put in. If I hit create shell here, you can see it doesn't actually even go all the way through because the cylinder itself wasn't inserted far enough to cover a, th a shell thickness of eight. So it basically ended up looking like a Boolean operation. And that's pretty much all it did. It didn't manage to punch through to the other side. Um, I can undo that and we can try maybe some, some other sizes. So uh, obviously eight didn't manage to punch through if we had changed that and gone to a smaller size say manage say two or something like that obviously the cylinder then was long enough to get through so we could actually create the shell and it will do it flawlessly um, and as you can see there there's some little artifacts on the inside but that's on the inside shell again i'll hold down Control shift alt to show you the inside of that they don't really matter the, the shell is still working you can smooth them out if you want to i wouldn't spend i wouldn't waste the time basically that's going out to a 3d printer let the machine worry about that um, you would just clean up the edges as you would as we did when we had it at a resolution of four, so there's no biggie there. But it's certainly the main thing to take out of this is to remember that the main shell itself, the cylinder going into the shell, has to be at least as thick as the wall thickness that you're in, uh, attempting to create. Um, I'll turn on double sided here so you can see again. So that's the the inside shell is really thin there. So obviously, when you go to export this, sometimes, uh, well, rather not obviously, but sometimes. Uh, errors will creep into the model uh, at the edge of the hole. You saw that the mesh was torn earlier on at the edges and even on models like this, it may not appear to have a problem, but sometimes they do. There is a free open source software called NetFab Studio, which will allow you to fix these holes that generally occur around this area. Um, and I'm gonna post a link to that um, on this on this webpage uh, where this video is contained. So hopefully you can use that to see um, how to fix those errors. It's pretty cool, I hope you'll agree. and. Uh, this is a great way to reduce your printing costs by up to 90%. So if you have any questions or suggestions, please leave them on the blog and I'll try and get back to you as soon as I can. Thanks for watching.